On this week's show, we go behind the scenes of Parker and the City in the Sea, Profile Quiz Bowl President Michael Lowe, and Gunty Weisenberger talks with varsity wrestlers as they rumble in the arena. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Aiden Duffy. Hello and welcome to this week's show. On November 28th, the winter sports season kicked off with the 28th annual Red and White Night in the Lavino Fieldhouse. The 2018-2019 boys and girls varsity basketball teams were introduced, Lawrenceville dance squads and musicians performed, and fans watched the dunk competition and participated in contests and a scrimmage. Last week, Students and faculty attended the 2018 National Association of Independent Schools Student Diversity Leadership Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Students learned about the complexity of identity while practicing facilitation skills and meeting students involved in social justice work from around the country. Laurentians began their Hanukkah celebration on December 2nd at the home of Rabbi Lauren Levy. The festivities continued for the remainder of the holiday, with students lighting a menorah in Woods Memorial Hall each evening. On Monday night, in the Kirby Arts Center, award-winning journalist, historian, and biographer Ron Chernow gave the Whedon Lecture. Chernow discussed his latest book, Grant, a biography of Ulysses S. Grant, which was named one of the best books of 2017 by both the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. The Times of Trenton honored a number of Big Red Fall athletes and one coach. Fourth former Ashley Warren was selected to the All-Area Girls Volleyball Team for the third year. All prep awards went to Robert Ank as Cross Country Runner of the Year, Katie Chappett as Girls Cross Country Coach of the Year, and both the Big Red Girls Cross Country and Field Hockey squads as Team of the Year in their respective sports. In August, Laurentians debuted Parker and the City and the Sea. Executive Manager of Production, Toby Ologu, takes you behind the scenes. Their play is called Parker and the City and the Sea, written by Lawrenceville staff member Ian August and directed by arts master Matthew Campbell. Students stage the production in the Edinburgh Fringe Festival as part of their Harkness Travel Program this past summer. Four months later, the cast and crew reprised their roles for one last performance. From Scotland to Lawrenceville, L10 News brings you their story. So the Fringe encompasses all performing arts. So it's not just performance, it's street performance, ventriloquism, and basically anything you can think of on stage or not even on stage. Um, but we saw, I think my personal favorite was a small musical called Buried mm -hmm. that was yeah, basically was about two serial killers who fall in love. Take that as you will. <laughs> in Edinburgh, there's a Royal Mile, which goes from the castle down to like the water, at least the mi a mile running up to the castle. And what a lot of people do is they go on and try to advertise their shows to people to just encourage them to come out. You'd break up into small groups with goggles on that would get foggy after 30 seconds. <laughs> and then you'd blow bubbles, like little bubbles, but they, we had trouble with them. And um, we, we would stand up and encourage people to come to the show. We would hand out cards. Anushka was probably the best at it. And yeah. yeah. We took little props with us, basic props, um, but then the chairs we had to acquire for the festival, we didn't actually fly with chairs. The only thing that we took was one suitcase filled with these two projectors, these two uh, light effects, and then all of our props and then costumes, including <laughs> Bailey's braces. Like we had to like put those into a lug. Everything had to be in one bag. Some of the theater programs here performed our play and took scenes to like act out. And then I'd have like kids coming up to me asking me how I did the play, assuming like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> was, like, it, was, it made me feel really good because like, I can give some information and now I'm some kind of primary source on something. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes MC had to like censor it a little bit. Um, it was, 
<laughs> it was overall like really awesome to be able to talk with the playwright. So it was a really interesting experience being able to like build our characters from the ground up. <laughs> this is Lawrenceville experience like abroad on the road, where you're getting feedback. You have the playwright, you have a director, you have technical. People all over the world have seen you and they're telling stories about you. You're living in other people's memories and that to me is Lawrenceville. That is that is what we do and I'm I just can't tell you enough how amazing it has been to be part of this and you'll never forget this. For fifth former Michael Lowe, Quiz Bowl is more than a competition. It's a lifestyle. We caught up with Lowe, president of Lawrenceville's Quiz Bowl Club, to learn how he is revitalizing the buzzer beating team. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm a fifth former and I'm the president of the Quiz Bowl Club here at Lawrenceville. So I had Quiz Bowl, I think, when I was in middle school um, and I really loved it and when I came to Lawrenceville and I realized that Quiz Bowl um, had existed here before but um, was kind of dormant in these last few years, I decided to, you know, get Quiz Bowl back into the Lawrenceville community. So Quiz Bowl is kind of like an academic um, competition in a sense because you're taking the stuff that you learn from your classes um, and bringing them into kind of this friendly but also fast-paced um, com competition and activity that you do, um, you know, with your friends. I think it's important here at Lawrenceville because it gives um, students here a medium to express their love for trivia, um, and their love for general knowledge, um, and kind of show it off. We do kind of tournament style competitions about, you know, once a term. Um, that's when we travel um, to other schools. Like in the fall, we went to Princeton University to compete against other high school um, teams just from New Jersey. We did much better than we expected at Princeton. Um, we went, I think, eight and three. Um, and now we're looking forward into going to Columbia um, during February. Um, so we're all um, kind of working hard and preparing for that tournament. And we hope that you know we can come back um, with the championship sometime this year. You can definitely uh, come out to our club meetings um, Thursdays um, at 6. If you are interested in going to the tournament, that's on Mondays and Fridays. Um, and there we just kind of run through quiz bowl packets, play past tournaments, answer as many questions as we can, and um, you know, learn if we make that mistake so we don't repeat that. There's always more opportunities, at least on campus at Lawrenceville, because we have, I think, House Quiz Bowl that's coming up um, very soon. Um, be on the lookout for that. And we can have um, events. Um, we're trying to host events for trivia nights, um, other Quiz Bowl sponsored um, events um, in the winter and spring. Finally tonight, fifth former Gunty Weisenberger brings us to the action from the annual Rumble in the Arena presented by Lawrenceville Wrestling. Hey, my name is Gunty. Um, we're here at the scene at uh, Rumble in the Arena. It's a very exciting event. We have exhibition matches from some of the top wrestlers and some up and coming wrestlers, as well as a fun sumo suit wrestling contest. Look at this. This is pretty crazy. Let's let's watch some of this match here, huh? Oh, it is! Griswold takes it! And, um, Aiden, how does it feel to win that match? It feels pretty good. You know, my team still has a bit further to push, but so far, one win, not bad. That's the real deal right there. You gotta love that. That's intensity. He's ready to go. So, basically, right now, who's in a good position? Because I don't really understand what's going on. So you see how he's got Thomas Lay on his back? Yeah. But only one of Thomas Lay's shoulders is down, so it's not a pin. But see Coach Clord as the ref is counting off back points. Uh, five counts is three points. Oh. Two counts is, three counts is two points. So it's like in basketball when the ref counts like three in the key, and then you get three seconds, but instead of it's a foul, it's like you get points. Something about this sport, it's, it's different, that's for sure. I mean, look at this. They're like contorting their body. Like I couldn't do half the things they're doing. We had a lot of great exhibition matches from the wrestlers, as well as some nice uh, sumo suit wrestling going on and some basketball in the background here. It's always a plus. And a gr uh, some great attendance as well. Um, so uh, overall it was an exciting day and have a good night. That's what we call a dub right there. Thank you, Gunty. 
That is our show for this week. From all of us here at L10, thank you so much for watching, and happy holidays.